I'm at the Tamiya booth, obviously, and I'm looking at a dream come true. Um, the Corsair is by far my favorite aircraft of any aircraft in the whole world, and I'm a, a super aircraft nut. And to have Tamiya do my beloved aircraft in a 30-second scale, all-new kit, uh, is basically a dream come true. Uh, let's take a look at this beauty. They've done the birdcage version as they uh, have done in the past with their 48 scale kit, which is the, the first operational version of the Corsair. And uh, they've done everything you would expect them to do. The uh, cockpit, of course, is beautifully detailed. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it there on the video, but it's gorgeous. Uh, they've even gone the, uh, the extra step of making separate instrument panel and lens pieces so that you can really get a perfect effect of the glass covering on the instruments in the instrument panel. As far as the, uh, the major features of the model are concerned, the things that everybody's going to want to know about, the wings do fold. You can build them up or down. They don't move after completion. You need to pick which, which or the other. Uh, but you can build the wings up or down. You can build the landing gear up or down. As you can see here, it's in flight mode. Uh, and also, after assembly, the propeller and cowl do remove to show off the R2800 Pratt & Whitney engine. Uh, and they have completely retooled the engine as well here. Now, a lot of model companies have modeled the R2800 in the past, uh, but this looks like a gorgeous new rendering of what was probably the, the most important American aircraft uh, engine of World War II. Uh, so there you have it. The uh, stand is also included for displaying her uh, if you're going to be doing it in flight. You can see that uh, the detail is everything you'd expect. The inside of the wing folds, it's all great. The uh, canopy also can be built either in the open or closed position. It doesn't slide and open or close after completion, but you, you select whether you're going to uh, display it as in an open or closed configuration, and there's separate parts for all of that too. So some colors have come out for it and everything. Uh, as usual, Tommy appears to have done everything right. The biggest problem for me with this kit is I don't know where I'm going to find the time to build it but there's nothing on the market right now that I want to build more than this beauty. All right, folks, we're here at the Tamiya booth, and the big news for armor modelers is the uh, 135th scale kit of the Type 10 main battle tank of the Japan Self-Defense Forces, Ground Self-Defense Forces here. Uh, you see some of the older kits. we got the Type 90, the Type 74, and this is the new kit, the Type 10, so-called because it was introduced in uh, 2010, or it was, uh, yeah, chosen for service in 2010, the Hito Maru Shiki Sensha Type 10 one we've been waiting for. I built the, uh, the excellent little Fujimi 172nd scale kit uh, several months ago and have been hoping for a 135th scale kit for quite some time. We knew Tamiya would be coming out with it and here it is. Excellent detail. Comes with uh, two figures, commander and the uh, crewman there. And if you want to take a look down here at the sprues, we got the sprues set up here. The sprue breakdown. All kinds of cool stuff. Um, again, it comes with the two figures. You see there, the turret is broken down like this. Barrel, two piece, left and right side piece of barrel. Parts as such. Uh, it's got the, the non rubber block all steel tracks here rendered as easy to assemble one piece flexible belts, um, which is just fine for this tank because you can't see have, uh, most of the tracks anyway because of the, the big side skirts on the side. It's got a little mesh, little vinyl mesh for the things there, and uh, decals for several marking options. Uh, so, yeah, excellent Tommy uh, detail. Again, this is the, the all-new Type 10 tank, which has just been introduced as, as uh, Japan's new main battle tank. And actually, I think I can probably pick up one over here. All right, so now I'm actually holding it in my hands, as you can see here. Uh, again, as I was mentioning the tracks, it rolls. rolls very nicely if you are inclined to zoom it around. Uh, but again, very nice, flexible vinyl tracks. Great teeth on both sides. Again, these are the non-rubber blocked all steel ones, as you can see there. Um, yep, it rolls, but again, you can barely see hardly any of the track there. It's kind of cool. And all the excellent detail on top, the intricate basket, stowage basket on the back there. And I think that's what some of this mesh is for. Put that in there, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, all the hatches are openable, highly detailed machine gun. Clear parts up front for the driving lights, and just fine detail throughout. Somebody's already done a little number on the antenna here, but you'd want to replace these with wire or something anyway, so very, very cool. So I'm very happy to see this release here. Oh, and by the way, this is the production version of the tank. Uh, the earlier kits we've seen from Fujimi have been uh, the uh, pre-production prototype, and now we have actual production version. See a little bit different here, the smoke, uh, smoke candles, smoke dispensers there are different than the, the earlier kits we've seen. 
Um, this uh, cupola arrangement here is a bit different, and I'm sure if we look through it, we'll find all kinds of other differences from the prototype to the production version. So this is the production version of the Type 10, and it looks very, very good. We got enough light there, so super cool. Rail moves up and down the course, starts traverses, they always do. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about this. So I'll be building this one uh, pretty soon. Hopefully we'll be seeing it on Hobbylink TV and on Hobbylink Japan. So there we go. I'm going to put this back down here. Ah, if you want to see the figures, I can bring the little guys over here. My big hand, they look very really small, but uh, yeah, very nicely detailed guys. You can ride in the turret. So cool figures. And there we go. We got the sprues, we got some built ups. Sample of the kit there. So, rocket and rolling, some modern armor from Tamiya, the uh, Japanese Self Defense Forces Type 10 main battle tank. Here at the Tamiya booth, checking out some more excellent armor kits. Uh, now, what we have here, personal favorite of mine, I'm a big guy, I like big models, big hands, easy to work with. Uh, Tamiya is re releasing some of their older. 125th scale kits. These come from our original toolings were from the 70s, maybe even back to the 60s. Uh, but I've always loved these. Uh, they might have their problems with accuracy and proportions and things like that, but these are nice big kits, individual uh, link tracks that pop together and um, they just build into big fun tank models. Up here you see that this is the, the Panther A. And it says here this one actually originally came out in 72. Uh, this one is going to be re-released in June, so that's next month. Uh, the, the Panther A variant of that kit. And this is the original box art here, so it even's got the cool Tank Classics original kit. Oh, and it tells you when it was released. Uh, so it's nice to see these old big kits back. And if you come down here a little bit, uh, over here we have the Centurion kit. Now this was, is generally considered to be one of the best of Tamiya's 125th scale kits as far as accuracy goes. Uh, and it builds into a nice model. This particular one has uh, an interior as well. Some of these were released uh, motorized versions, non-motorized versions, and this one had an interior. Now moving over here, we've got the T-34-85. Russian tank over there, and next to that one is the 125th scale. Uh, the, it was called the Rommel by, uh, by Tamiya, but uh, we know it as the Jagd Panther, the uh, hunting panther right there. So excellent kits if you like these big 125th scale kits, which I do, and it's great to see Tamiya having these back. And these, uh, most of them are coming out, I see, in July. The Jagd Panther is coming out in uh, June, and so is the regular panther. So these are pretty cool. Again, big guy, big models, big fun from Tamiya. Here at the Tamiya booth, checking out a new ship kit coming from the fine folks here. Uh, this is a 1700 scale kit. You can see it's rather small. It's a, the U.S. Navy destroyer Haman DD-4112. Uh, it played a big role in the Battle of Midway. Uh, as you can see here, it's uh, the, the aircraft carrier Yorktown. It uh, supported the Yorktown in that battle in World War II. Uh, this is coming out in July, a couple months from now. So very small but very detailed here. And here's the sprue shot breakdown here. Again, it builds into a waterline model. So for you waterline uh, World War II ship models out there, another great kit in 1700 scale from the fine folks at Tamiya.